At this time, I'd like to invite Mark up to the podium, please. It's unsustainable. 
coming back to the purpose of the federal government, these regulations, these taxes, these takings, and this debt is a crush on our economy. That's my political platform. Thank you. It is now time for the question and answers for this candidate. So I'm going to let you come back four minutes for question and answers, and I'll let you choose your question. Point of information is before you start your question, there is no follow up. You only have 20 seconds here to ask your question. You want to get in as many as possible. Okay, that's 20 seconds. Chair Davis. General Murcher, what have you done in this community that we should raise our go to the polls and vote for you? I've never heard your name until you qualified as a candidate for this race. And we, as a whole of this community, normally meet our candidates by the community activities. So what activities have you been involved in in Dallas County? Uh, my activities, uh, a few years ago, I volunteered at the Public Defender's Office, uh, mostly Little League. Uh, I really re-engaged with my family because there's a lot of ways to serve your community. And my deployments overseas were, in a sense, serving my community. That mission is now complete and that service. That's why I'm here now. I want to serve my community because when I drive around, I see vacant storefronts. I see businesses that aren't there anymore. I think there's a consequence of how the federal government is, is treating us and how our local economy is reacting. That, that, is, that is my goal for my future service.
That was four minutes for his q and I would like to let you do a one-minute wrap-up closing statement. Okay, I, I can be faster than one minute. The reason I'm running, I'm, it says conservative Republican. I don't think that exactly. I think I'm a conservative in relative terms. I'm actually just somebody that believes that the framers are onto a good idea that's migrated away into regulations, taxes, and debt. We, we, can, we can change the helm of the ship of state of the United States to bring us back where we can have better job growth and economy. In my view, the Republican Party is now offering the voters a choice between big government and bigger government. I don't think that's a choice. I think we've lost our way. I'm coming back to actually have a distinction that I want to get our entrepreneurial spirit back front and center, put the government in support of making the conditions for us to run business. Thank you. Next up is Representative Kathleen Peters. I also wanted to announce just one real quick message. Um, Joe Bordeaux, our, one of our Tiger Bay members, uh, has re requested and is uh, freely recording this luncheon and all future Tiger Bay luncheons will be streaming it live on the internet and mobile devices. And you can write it down at radiosafety.com. That's RadioStPete.com. Today's candidate forum will also be archived by RadioStPete.com and available for on-demand listening later today. So thank you, Joe Bordeaux, for doing that for the spot. Really appreciate it. Kathleen Peters. Good afternoon. And before I start, the only thing I do want to do is um, thank you, John, for his service. I think we really do that all too often, and he had a dedicated beautiful career, and so I thank you, sir, for your service. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. I'm Kathleen Peters, and I can tell you I'm a proud mom of four, which you already heard, and a proud grandmother of four grandsons. I consider myself a very pragmatic, get the job done, businesswoman, Public servant. I've been a community advocate, a former city commissioner, a mayor, and a state representative. And I've been a member of the Pinellas County Committee for 28 years. I believe that Congressman Young was a true statesman. I believe that he was truly an icon. He left a legacy for all of us to value and hopefully model. So who's going to be the next person to step up? Who's going to be the next one to represent this beautiful and grand place that we live right here in the Pennsylvania? With my life experience as a Cub Scout leader, as a Little League and a soccer mom, as a small business owner, community advocate, someone focused many, many years on youth development and taking care of our children right here in Pinellas County, who served at local government where we truly have to meet the very basic needs of our citizens. I believe that those kind of relationships that I have been able to build over years through that kind of community development and community leadership makes me a strong candidate because no one knows the Nelson County that is on your slate better than I do. I've got experience taking on small issues. I have experience taking on really big issues in our community. I've got experience writing policy not only writing it at the local level and at the state level, but having to stay there and make a vote to oppose or support. And every one of you can take a look at my voting record and know exactly what I stand for. Because I have that track record. I believe 
believe that our country's problems are not going to take care of themselves. And I think it's time that we roll up our sleeves and we face our problems and we make those hard choices and we make them together and we come up with comprehensive solution. And it is not an individual that does that, it is a team player that does that. And that's what my track record speaks. I believe that we need to take care of our children and our grandchildren's future because right now I don't think it's very secure. I believe that we must make sure that every single citizen has the ability to have a job. We worked really hard in Florida to make sure that our Floridians can have a job. We worked really hard here in Florida in the state legislature to make sure that companies want to move here and create jobs. We worked really hard to make sure that we're producing students out of our schools that can meet the demand of the workforce. Because when we have a strong economy, when we have strong schools, our communities grow and they flourish and they can take care of themselves. I believe that we need to make sure that we have a balanced budget we should have a balanced budget just like you and I have. Every city, every county, every state has to have a balanced budget, but why not Congress? The debt and the deficit that they are imposing on future generations is absolutely unacceptable and inexcusable. And first and foremost, the most pressing thing that must be addressed that Washington is not is taking care of our flood insurance. Do they not ever look at the analysis of a bill before they pass it to see what it's going to do when the rubber hits the road? Because I don't believe they do. And I'll stop.
of standing here, and I got a bill passed that for four years. Senior legislators couldn't get passed, and it was an important bill for so many people right here in Pinellas County. I'm a get it done kind of girl. And when Congressman Young first said he wasn't going to run for the election, I was really surprised that I received more than 12 phone calls at my office asking me to consider running. From many people I hadn't personally met. And when many people who I truly thought were going to step up and run for this seat, good leaders from Pinellas County, like Rick Baker, who had great admiration for, for the sheriff, great admiration, Senator LaBelle. And our homegrown people did not step up. I was asked by several of those leaders, and by the congressman's son himself, if I would do this. And I did. I'm confident that I can serve Pinellas County as well and better in Washington as I can in Texas. Your four minutes is up, but you do have time for a closing statement. Um, you know, I did write a statement, and I will tell you, I think it's really important that the person that represents Pinellas County is truly somebody who has truly deep roots in Pinellas County. And that's the one thing that I truly do with this community, is very deep roots developing programs to help our children in school, programs that won awards, that reduced our behavior referral rates 50% and our arrest rates by 23% because it's important to protect our children and have an outstanding education. And it wasn't my job to do it. But I love this community, and I've always advocated for children. They're our future, and somebody needs to protect them. And right now, Washington is not doing that, and I'm prepared to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Peters. At this time, we have David Jolly as our third on the list, and we will have five minute opening remarks, four minutes for your Q and A, and about one minute closing. Thank you. Thank you, Ann Tigers. Uh, thank you for letting me be here today. As a former member of uh, board member of this organization, this is exciting. But I also know what I'm stepping into. So. Let's have some fun. I'm excited to be at Tiger Bay, even if there's some who would like to poke fun saying we're having this 13th congressional debate in the 14th district. Oh. Oh, Listen, Kathleen and I agree on something. This race is about Pinellas County. This race is about making sure someone from Pinellas County is elected to represent our neighbors and our communities here in Pinellas County and take that to Washington. There are two very special Pinellas County families here today I want to recognize. The family of our late Congressman Bill Young and his wife Beverly is here. son Billy is here as well, a fine gentleman there in the back of the room. The second family I'd like to introduce is my, my parents, the Reverend Lawson Jolly, formerly a minister at Calvary Baptist Church in Clearwater, my mother, a proud Clearwater Tornado alum. So love I was born in Eddie. When I went to Washington, I did so with nothing more than the love of my parents. And I did so because I'm the type of Republican that believes in the equality of opportunity. We didn't come from means. I was a preacher student who followed my dream to work in public policy. And what happened to me was a moment of providence. I met a man who changed my life forever, and that man was Billy Young. And for nearly 20 years, for nearly 20 years, I had the opportunity to work alongside Congressman Young, serving this community, both here in Pinellas County and in Washington, alongside him as he worked on issues like beach nourishment, supporting our veterans, supporting our seniors, infrastructure, and as he worked to ban the offshore oil drilling in our Gulf. Now let's talk politics, because that's why we're here, and that's why we enjoy Tiger Bay. Some polls, we haven't done any head-to-head -head polls, but if you believe the head-to-head -head polls, we are leading this primary. I believe we're leading this primary because, first and foremost, I'm a billion Republican that believes in working with everybody. Republicans, independents, Democrats, and how, that is how we're going to win this race. But I also believe we're leading because we're an unconventional candidate. When Mr. Young passed away, there were a lot of great community leaders receiving phone calls. Mayor Baker was one of them, we all know what a great leader he is, and I appreciate his support. The sheriff was receiving phone calls as well. My phone wasn't ringing. 
Nobody called me, nobody would have said that today we would be standing here in this election, but we are. And I believe what's working is that I like to talk about the truth. I like to talk about issues. I don't believe in poll tested one line attacks that are simply done to fund mail businesses. I believe in the issues. So, Tigers, let's talk about the issues. You're going to hear throughout this race that I'm lobbyist. I'm a Pinellas County businessman. I work in finance and clear water. I have a communications firm. I run a nonprofit management firm. I have a consulting business, and yes, for some of my clients, I have been a registered lobbyist. And I'm proud of the work that I've done for my clients. As a result of my work, I was able to bring funding to the U.S. Marshals to track and apprehend absconders from the sex offender registry. I was able to work on growing small businesses here in Pinellas County, bringing jobs to companies that were having trouble working with the federal government. And I was proud to advance medical research for wounded warriors with amputations. That is the type of work I've done for this community, and we're going to talk about that every single day. I wear it as a badge of honor. So I'm proud of my record fighting for Pinellas. I'm proud of my record working alongside Bill Young. This race is going to be about substance, not about attacks. This, issue, this race is going to be about taking on issues, not taking on each other. And this race is going to be about qualifications. We are all here running for a job. And what I'm asking this community to do is to consider who is the most qualified candidate to step into the Congressional District 13 seat that was left vacant by our late dear Congressman and be able to affect the people of this community and the needs of this community on day one. This is a job application process. I got into this race because I believe with humility that I am a candidate most qualified on day one to step in and serve the people of this county. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I'm not sure we've had a question yet to win the Fang and Claw Award, so I'm expecting it to be here in the next four months. <laughs> Thank you, David. We will now have our question and answer period. And David, you get to choose your questions. Right here at this table. I'm Amy Osias, and I'm from Tiger Bay in Tampa. And I've heard a couple of you now talk about how important it is to have deep roots in Pinellas County. And while I understand that the state might have some unique issues, I wonder, other than bringing home the bait in which any congressman or congressperson would want to do. What are the issues that make it important to be in Pinellas when you're going to work for our country in this uh, Congress? That's a great question. Thank you. And I think that's a question that is, uh, speaks to the unique qualifications of somebody from Pinellas County. <laughs> Kathleen mentioned the flood insurance issue. That is a crisis that is worsening every day. There's another local issue. We all know the legacy Mr. Young left with our military team. There are jobs here on the line. As a result of him leaving, we have uh, companies in the high tech, the manufacturing, and the defense industry that have to consider whether or not they stay in the Nellis County. About six years ago, anticipating Mr. Young's eventual retirement, I led an effort to start a chamber of commerce organization. We brought together 60 different companies in the defense and high tech arena, from the largest uh, prime contractors nationally to the small two-person precision machine shop in Clearwater. And the idea was, let's build an economic base here that can be sustained when the political leadership changes eventually. That's a critical issue. That's jobs. And when we talk about my work in private practice, I like to talk about my work with the job, the job base here because that's critical for this community. Yes. Hi, good afternoon. Renee Flowers. Okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, question. Women are still paid about 70 cents on the dollar, and even though we see that the minimum wage is increasing somewhat, it still is not considered a living wage because we still have people working as working poor. What do you plan to do so that we don't have working poor, we just have working men and women? That's a great question. I agree. What we're talking about there, again, is the equality of opportunity, right? The fastest way to improve the lives of everybody from the skilled worker to the unskilled worker, from men to women, is to create an economy that grows. As we have a conversation about the disparity in income, we often find ourselves having that conversation during economic downturns, when everybody's hurt. Those that make the least, they hurt the most in those times. When economic times are good, we rarely have those conversations. If 
you consider the mid 2000s, the economy was great. And that's the limit of everyone, including those making the most, including those making the least. I believe in the private sector. And that is simply a, a tenet of my foundational belief about it. I'm very wary of government interference in the private sector. I also believe we do have to pay close attention to the safety. And so that is an issue that I assure you I would pay close attention. Let's hope so. <laughs> Jerry Evans. Mr. Jolly, welcome back to our club. I, I believe you served on my board. I did, um, right. So thank you for coming. But you just indicated that it's an equal opportunity. Um, Ms. Flowers was talking about equal pay and ERA, which has been in Congress for set, since the 1970s and hasn't passed. So I'm curious as to how that's worse in a recession time than it is any other time. We're talking about the disparity of income, right? I mean, let's, right? Clearly, wage discrimination is and should be illegal. Discri discrimination on gender and a whole host of issues is and should be illegal. That's it. Next question. Todd. That's it. That's it. That's it. Uh, Listen, I, I go back and close the remarks. This is about job qualifications. Somebody is going to be elected on March 11th, and that person is going to go to Washington and be responsible for serving this community. Nobody is going to replace Bill Young, but his shadow is going to cast a long legacy across this race. And the most important thing we can do for our community is to elect somebody that knows how to affect this community impact the people of Pinellas County and actually get things done in the position for which we are all seeking elected office. I ask you to consider that qualification when you go to the polls. Thank you very much for letting me be here today. Thank you, David. At this time, I would like to introduce you to former CFO for the state of Florida and the pro candidate, Alex St. Alex
from people saying that seniors were being scammed and were being taken advantage of in the sales of financial products. So what did we do? I formed the Safeguard Our Seniors Task Force. We worked, yes, with the Republican legislature in Tallahassee to strengthen the penalties against people who were trying to scam seniors. And after the governor's race, I didn't quit. I formed the Florida Next Foundation, a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization, because I believe so strongly that the way to rebuild our economy here in Florida is to support small businesses, entrepreneurs, young people, and innovators. But maybe one of my most important commitments in life has been to, with, along with Bill, to raise uh, our two children and teach them the values of hard work and public service. And so far, so good. My long commitment to public service and getting things done for Floridians is why I decided to take on this new challenge, to be your voice in the halls of Congress. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. We need federal policies that encourage and support businesses so that they can grow their business and hire more people into good-paying, sustainable jobs. Growing our economy also means that we have to get our fiscal house in order. Throughout my career, I've worked with Republicans and Democrats for fiscal responsibility, to identify waste in government, to save millions for the taxpayers of this state. It's time to bring that kind of attitude to the halls of Washington, and that's what I'll do. Now, there's been a lot of talk lately about the Affordable Care Act. The rollout has been a disaster. The administration has failed us. But I believe that Americans deserve the right to health insurance and affordable health care.
celebration of the constituent work that Congressman Young was doing here in this district. Uh, you can't go anywhere without a veteran or a citizen uh, commenting about that. And as I have talked to other people in Congress, uh, one of the most important functions of a congressperson is to be sure that we are responsive and we're here to help people solve their issues with the federal government, particularly our veterans. Uh, you all know that I, my husband, I'm the widow of a Vietnam War veteran. Uh, I've been dealing with the VA, so I've had firsthand experience of how important it is to be able to go to your congressional office. And I think that I would take the same approach that I did when I became the CFO and I went to Tallahassee. I didn't, I didn't overturn the staff there. I went and evaluated and learned what they had been doing. And I've heard some just amazing, incredible stories about uh, Congressman Young's staff. So it's going to be really important that uh, we have a seamless uh, transition uh, with a lot of people who are still there who know what the issues are. Beach for nourishment is really important because we depend on that as it relates to the tourism industry here in the state of Florida. We've had some hurricanes in the past that while they did not hit us, we had some repercussions as it relates to the BP oil spill and things of that nature. Can you share what it is that you would do to make sure that our beaches are protected so that we can make sure we have that positive continuous financial flow? Well, absolutely, because tourism and our beautiful beaches are uh, the jewel of this district and jewel of Pinellas County. And uh, uh, I'm reminded that Commissioner Welch, when we sat down together, said number one issue is continuing to get federal funding for beach renourishment. This is a place where that across-the-board sequestration that we're in has really hurt us. Uh, because it's caused the money to decline and it means the county and the local governments have had to make up the difference. So, um, top, uh, you know, one of the things that will be at the top of my list, uh, because this is the driver of our economy, is our beautiful beaches and making sure that uh, we have good uh, environmental policies in place and that we're in there fighting and advocating for our share of those uh, federal monies to help us uh, keep our beaches pristine, beautiful, uh, in the way they've always been, that we've always enjoyed. Stop for good? Okay. Your closing statement? Uh, your closing statement, we've got one in. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Thank you for being such an interested and engaged audience. Uh, I'm running for Congress because I believe that, and I know that I share, it's about values. It's about what are the values of the people in the 13th district. And can I be an effective and loud advocate for the people of my district? And I know I can. So I need your support. I need your help. I'm asking for your votes. Send me to Congress. Send me to Congress and I will take your voice with me and we will work. We will work together to accomplish the things that we know that government ought to be accomplishing for the American people. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. And our final candidate, Lucas Overby, you have five minutes for your opening statement, four minutes for your Q&A, and one minute for your closing statement.
against uh, Congressman Young and at the time Justin Hurley. Um, we've been very happy to be able to bring that engagement forward. We've been, able, been very lucky to get to work with the same groups that I've been working with for the last 10 years um, in different social communities and different civics projects that we actually get your voice. Since we've here, we've been out in the neighborhoods, walking doors, holding small town halls, holding small meetings, to hear what the constituents actually want, hear what they, they really want to get done and start bringing together real solutions that aren't crazy. Yes, I'm a libertarian. No, I'm not that kind of libertarian. <laughs> <laughs> Pragmatism is, is and has been our number one objective. What can we get done? What can we get done now? There is a lot of long term solutions. We don't have time for most of them. We know that going into the new year before we get there, whichever one of us you choose to send, we're going to be walking into a mess. We know that the next, the next fiscal fight is coming right before we get there. And we know whatever they decide to do is going to be a fight for the rest of the year. We need real solutions. We need to come together and we need to fight to fix this. Our biggest focus so far in my campaign has been tax relief. There's been several good solutions that have been presented by both parties that have all gotten shot down. Why aren't we simplifying the tax code? Why aren't we making it more fair? Why aren't we making it easier for small businesses to do their jobs? Right now we have massive subsidies. We're wasting tons of taxpayer money on the biggest on the, uh, the biggest intakers at the highest level. Yet small businesses have to fight and scrape. I've been in small business in this community my entire working life. I've been in commercial dialogue for 15 years. And our company doesn't, doesn't hold any more than 16 people. Yet we still got killed by affordable care. We still got killed by the new insurance laws and the new taxes that got passed in. 16 people. Most of my guys don't make that much money. How are they supposed to pay these new insurance costs? It's something that I work with and live with every day. I've seen each and every time we raise the taxes, each and every time we get small business with big business regulations. That for me has been one of the biggest issues. We regulate people like Walmart. They love it. They pay for it. They ask DC to give them the regulations simply so that competition goes away. Government contracting has been another big one that we've looked at. I, I'm very proud of the legacy that, that Congressman Young has left us for this community. It's something I want to withstand on. We need to make contracting easier. We need to make it fair. We need to get cronyism out of the way of it. There are amazing small businesses in this community that have not a shot to get any of these contracts. We need to open it up, we need to make it easier, we need to grow small business because that is where we are going to get unemployment further down. Thank you. Thank you. This time we'll take your four minute question and answer session.
they don't have a lot of regulation. Banks currently are charging people who don't have an account with the bank six dollars cash check because they haven't been forced to, to not by regulation. Would you regulate those banks? No. <laughs> a lot of these answers are really simple. Yeah, as a libertarian, I'm very much opposed to adding new regulation. Um, there's a lot we can do with removing regulation that's going to move a lot, of, a lot more forward than adding more. A lot of the problems that we've seen have arisen because we've stockpiled regulation on top of regulation on top of regulation. Let's legislate some of that off the table. Let's, let's find ourselves underneath all of it before we add more. I'm Gregory Wilson, and I commend the courage of your candidacy. Uh, but for better or worse, uh, this nation is largely a two-party system, and you're not a part of one of those two parties. Uh, when do you think we will see a turning point where a libertarian could play a more productive role? If you're that person, please tell us how. Uh, March 11th is actually going to be my, my answer. Um, on, a, on a full blown national scale presidency, I'll be the first to tell you you're looking at 2020s, 2030s before my party were to have a shot. Um, an election like this, we do have a shot. I wouldn't be here if we didn't. Uh, we got involved in this race because we know the community, we know the activists in the community, and we feel that we do have a real chance at 